Hey, what's up? This is Harry Wagner from Harry Situations, and today I want to talk to you about winter driving on snowy and icy roads. Now, we're going to cover things like whether an SUV is better, or a truck, or a crossover vehicle. We're going to talk about modifications you do and don't want to make to your vehicle. We're going to talk a lot about tires and also tips for driving on ice. So keep watching. So I do a ton of off-roading, and that includes things like overlanding, rock crawling, desert racing, and I'll be honest, I have never been as scared in any of those situations as I have when I have lost control on the ice. Now in rock crawling, typically you're going really slow, so even if you roll over, maybe it's just going to be a flop on the side. Uh, desert racing, I actually have rolled, but when you're in a vehicle that has a tube chassis and you're wearing a five-point harness and a containment seat, you have a head and neck restraint and a helmet and a fire suit on, it's not nearly as scary as when you're going 30 miles an hour and you're sideways and there's a semi-truck five feet away from you. That is terrifying. So we want to avoid that whenever possible. So I'll confess, the title of this video is a little clickbaity. Uh, you don't even have to watch to the end. I will tell you which I like better, four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. For icy roads, I'll take all-wheel drive like this Subaru Outback every day of the week. So why is that? Well, so this has a viscous coupler in the center and then it provides power front and rear and it's got open differentials in the front and rear. And what that does is it'll allow one tire to slip, but things don't bind up. So with four wheel drive, if you have that transfer case locked in four wheel drive, you can't really do that on a dry surface. And if you're in a low traction surface, it can cause you to break loose. So that's really what we want to avoid. When the tires break loose, that's when you lose control. So let's talk in general terms about SUVs, uh, crossovers, trucks, and then we'll talk in more specific terms about my wife's Subaru Outback and my Toyota Tundra that are our two daily drivers. Subarus have a reputation for being great in the snow, and it's well-deserved. You can't even buy a Subaru that's not all-wheel drive these days. They've got a center differential, they have all-wheel drive, so that center differential differentiates power, and then there's a front and rear differential that send power to each tire. And if one of them slips, the others still have traction, so you don't lose control. Now, compare that with the truck that only sends power to the rear, if you put it in four wheel drive, it's sending power front and rear, but this vehicle is lower to the ground. It's more stable. It does have a shorter wheelbase, which I really prefer a longer wheelbase. I think works better in the snow. If you do lose control, it's easier to correct with a longer wheelbase, which the truck has an advantage. I think icy roads too are another place where uh, I actually want more weight. In almost every situation I say, weight is bad. I want less weight off-road. I want less weight for acceleration. But in the case of ice, what we really want is that contact pressure. So we want our tire to have high contact pressure. I don't air down on icy roads. These are the complete opposite of deep snow. So we made a whole video about driving in deep snow, which is a ton of fun, but the setup for that is very different than driving on icy roads. In order to be sure-footed on icy conditions, you need a good set of tires. So in this case, my wife's Subaru is fitted with Nitto's Motivo 365 tires. My Tundra is fitted with Nitto's Terra Grappler G3 tires. Both of these tires are three peak mountain snowflake rated. Now, it's no coincidence that I'm talking about Nitto. This video is actually brought to you by Nitto. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe to the Driving Line channel so you don't miss any content in the future. All right, let's get into specifics and talk about my wife's Subaru Outback XT. So we actually made a whole video about this vehicle when we first bought it. This is a 2009, last year for the manual transmission. I really like that on icy roads, particularly when coming downhill, I can put it in the gear that I want, keep my feet off the brakes, use the compression braking to keep the speed that I want. Uh, you know, one issue with hitting the brakes is that the tires can lock up and then you lose traction. And that's one of the things I like about this vehicle. It also has heated seats. 
It has heated mirrors. It even has elements in the windshield that heat up the windshield wipers so that they don't ice up. This car is very sure-footed. It works really well in snow and ice. It's my first pick out of everything we own to drive on icy roads. Now, the Motivo 365, as the name implies, is a tire you can run year-round, 365 days a year. This differentiates it from, say, a studded tire or a dedicated winter tire that has a soft open cell compound. Those are tires that you don't want to run year round. You'll notice on these Motivo 365s that they have the uniform tire quality grade standards on the side. This is something we don't always see on a light truck tire like the Grappler lineup that I'm used to running. So it includes things like tread wear. The number on these is 560. The higher the number, the, the longer they're gonna last. These have a 60,000 mile tread wear warranty, so they're gonna last quite a while. Uh, the other things are traction and temperature. So this gets A's for traction and temperature. These Nittos are doing way better in school than I ever did. The traction relates to obviously how well they stick to the road. And then temperature is a function of how well they shed heat. So the siping really comes in handy here in terms of shedding heat. Those sipes provide a place in the winter for biting edges on ice. They provide a place for water to escape but they also, even on dry roads, will act as a sort of heat sink and let heat disperse from the tire carcass. So I mentioned sipes allow water a place to escape, but you're saying, Harry, you're talking about ice, not about water. Your entire vehicle is riding on these four little contact patches, and those create a ton of pressure. So if you think about a piece of coal being turned into a diamond due to pressure, that ice turns into water with the pressure from your tire. So in essence, when you lose traction on ice, you're hydroplaning because that ice has turned to water. So these sites allow the water a place to escape so that you maintain traction. All right, so let's talk about some tips for driving on icy roads. Number one, slow down. Don't be in a hurry, take your time. And, and honestly, even if you can avoid being on the road in icy roads, that's better. You know, when I first moved to Reno, I was making a trip back to the Bay Area. It's normally a four hour drive. There was a storm coming in. At the time I had a two wheel drive Dodge truck. My uncle told me, take these tire chains with you. Well, I took them, I ended up needing them. It took me 12 hours to get there and what a slog, it was not worth it at all. One of the chains came disconnected and beat in the side of my truck and I wish I had just stayed home. So if you have that option, take it. Now, if you do need to be out on the road, slow down, Look further ahead, leave plenty of room for braking. Now, when you brake or accelerate or turn, you wanna be real gentle with your movements because the goal is to not lose traction. So in that same vein, I find you want to accelerate or turn or brake or turn. If you try and crank the wheels and you hit the brake, you're probably just going to lose traction and slide. Now, if you do lose traction, in my experience, what you wanna do is take your feet off all the pedals and sort of turn into the slide. You'll feel the vehicle regain traction and then you can make more movements. But... When you're in a panic situation, a lot of times our instinct is to slam on the brakes. But on icy roads, slamming on the brakes isn't usually the best choice because it causes you to lose traction. So a better option is maybe ease onto the brakes or try and get off the gas and turn the vehicle. You wanna be real gentle with your inputs. These are less of a concern now with anti-lock brakes, which don't really let the tires slide as much. They will perform the same sort of function that we're talking about where they keep the tire turning, which allows it to maintain traction. But it's still a good idea not to slam on the brakes on icy roads. So let's talk a little more about my Toyota Tundra and what I do and don't like about it in snow and ice. And really my biggest complaint is that all trucks inevitably are going to be heavier in the front where the engine is and light in the back, particularly when the bed is empty. So the worst example of this would be my wife's Dodge Ram. So that's a truck that has a Cummins engine, notoriously heavy, and then we added an ARB bull bar, a worn winch, so we put another 300 pounds on the front of the vehicle. We also added an aluminum tray bed to the back, so the back's even lighter than it was, and that thing, you can break the tires loose on it, even on dry pavement. So it doesn't stand a chance in two-wheel drive on icy roads. Now, if it's got 30 bales of hay in the back, it's a different story, but if we did our job in the summer, we shouldn't need 30 bales of hay in the winter. 
on my truck, a lot of times what I find is when I'm driving in the mountains in the winter, you'll go from a high traction environment where it's dry, and then maybe you come around a corner and there's been water running over the road, over the night it's frozen, and all of a sudden you're in a low traction environment. Now the Subaru deals with that, no problem at all. The truck, on the other hand, if I'm in two wheel drive, when I hit that ice, it's gonna get kind of funny, the rear end wants to come around, but I don't wanna be in four wheel drive all the time because I'm on that dry surface, variable road conditions, and trying to account for that. I do find that putting some weight in the back of the truck helps. Uh, it could be sandbags. Some people carry kitty litter. That can be really handy to add extra traction should you go off the road or you need more traction. Uh, so those can come in handy. The best thing this Tundra has going for it is the Nitto Terra Grappler G3 tires that are on it. So these are tires that are three peak mountain snowflake rated. They've got a ton of sipes in them. This is a relatively narrow tire. It's a 295 70 18, narrower than a normal 33 or 35 by 12.5 tire, which helps with that contact pressure. As we've talked about before, lots of siping in the tread blocks to allow water to evacuate. Maybe you're wondering about vehicle modifications, what sort of things you want to do. You'll notice both of these vehicles have amber fog lights on them, down low, out in the bumper. I find those in low visibility, like if you're in a snowstorm, I find that really handy. Uh, if you've ever tried to turn on your brights in a snowstorm, it just sort of reflects off all the snow and you can see less. So the lighting really works well. This truck has a limited slip differential in the back. Uh, that works pretty good. In my experience, things like automatic lockers uh, in the differentials like my Ford has that lock both tires together, goes back to just like the transfer case locking. The function is the same. So basically it wants both to turn at the same speed. Well, as soon as you go around a corner, the outside tire needs to go further than the inside tire. The inside one breaks traction and all of a sudden you slide around. So automatic lockers, not good on icy roads. Open differentials are good. Selectable lockers, like my Jeep Wrangler came with electric lockers in it. ARB air lockers are great choices for icy road conditions. And honestly, you're probably just gonna leave them open. This truck has a Powertrax Grip Pro gear-driven limited slip in the back. I really like that on the trail. I haven't found it to be a detriment in icy conditions like a full locker would be. And it, it's pretty inexpensive to purchase relatively inexpensive to install, and you don't have to deal with hoses or electrical switches or solenoids and things like that. So for rock crawling, is this a good choice? No, not necessarily. But for a daily driven vehicle, I've been really pleased with the Grip Pro. That's it for this episode. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about winter driving conditions on icy roads. Drop a comment below and let me know what your tips are or any questions you might have. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this Harry Situations video on the Driving Line channel. Driving Line has all sorts of great content creators and they're dropping new content almost daily. You're definitely gonna wanna subscribe so you don't miss any of it in the future. And we'll see you out on the trail.